Welcome, Thomas. Stepping closer to the stage, you're going to show us how to move S7 components closer to the MindSphere platform. Is that basically what it's about? Yes, it is, man. OK. Perfect. OK. <laughs> a yes means I can move off the stage. For sure. Have fun. Thanks a lot for staying here. I have to uh, introduce our company for the, with the first two slides. And then I will get into deep dive and into our project we have done together with Daimler and Siemens. So you see here an overview of our company, how we are separated in different regions around the world. And uh, especially on the right side, you can see the percentages of our daily business, what we are doing in percentage. For example, let me describe this a little bit and read it here. 50% of our business we are doing with business and platform solutions. 33% so is uh, infrastructure and data management things. 10% are transactional and payment services, which is really interesting to have this in our process chain, in our uh, portfolio we have. And 7% big data and security, which is growing day by day. Let's go ahead to show you a few pictures of the things which uh, of uh, companies we are working with, automotive, non-automotive, and coming from different regions around the world. So you can imagine what we are doing, what portfolio we have from the customer side and what we can help you. Let's make a deep dive into the project I want to talk about now. So the scope of the project uh, was related to get closer to S7 components from Siemens. We started at the customer as a strategic MindSphere partner of Siemens. We are this and we are doing on-premise solutions. We are a preferred partner here of Siemens to enable this for the next time. And um, this was also initialized uh, as we started uh, to get closer with them to make this project which I'm talking about. The challenge was to help the customer in a so-called multi-company scenario. There was a, in the middle, there was a component from IBM which is called Manufacturing Service Bus. And we brought Siemens to the stage and we connected all the things to the MindSphere platform to enable the signals coming from the production cell to send the data into the MindSphere platform. The progress we had in our project was um, we supported the, this customer for enabling the so-called holistic solution, which means not only getting the data from the sensors, making analytics, making cockpits, show the customer what the data are doing and what the data he can do in addition to this with his data for the future. Key success factors was a possible downtime. It is possible to reduce the downtime from 5 to 10 per, to 10 percent. And um, here, I will explain this in the slide later, to uh, reduce, uh, to, to decrease the ramp up time of a machine which the customer is uh, um, using in this production line. And last but not least, it was really successful for us to have this solution running and to have this in a um, Steering committee, we have uh, made a presentation there. It was a really successful solution. So you have not only to do the things, you have to talk about this. And we have done this as well together with Siemens and the customer, the end customer. Let me get closer to the things which I'm talking about. We have three different things on the left side. Maybe you know it. If you don't know, I will explain it a little bit. A ramp up time. You can imagine it's a time if you are buying a machine and the seller is saying, OK, this machine is running now on your side. You have to do a lot of customization. And you have to do this not one time. If you are buying 200 machines, you have to do this 200 times. So you can imagine how many activities you have to do. And with the solution we have done, we are able to reduce this so-called ramp up time as the first, let me say, goal we had. Decreasing the downtime is a normal process, not only for the automotive industry. In every production line, you want to decrease the downtime. And we made a deep dive into the cycle time area of these components and of the production lines to show where are the problems are coming up. And to make an analytics to see what's going on here. Why do you need five milliseconds more than another part is needed for this in another location? And the third part here is to prevent and monitor machine stoppages. 
This is a really complexity thing. Uh, it's a strong complexity thing. You have to make an analytics on coding. It's a little bit hard to imagine uh, this, but you have to, you, you can, um, let me say, make a deep dive into the code, not only from the correctness of the code, from the performance of the code. This is a high, high sophisticated uh, uh, thing. We are making research on that. And if you are interested, please come back to me, to Arthur's, and let me know we are uh, doing this as well right now. What was the, the different things of the solution we made? We enabled the customer uh, to navigate into the production line. This means not only from a geography perspective to make a selection of a location. The customer was able to select a hall. Inside the hall, we are providing the map of the hall. And at the end, the customer was able to navigate to a production line. This was the first point to see uh, what is in your focus, where you want to, to take a look on. The second thing here is to track the cycle times. As I described before, a robot arm, for example, is going from, from uh, position A to position B, moving downwards or upwards. And you can directly follow the things into the S7 component, which steps the machine is doing. If you are doing this, you want to uh, see what was happened 300 times before, 300 units before uh, you are working right now. So you, we made a so-called persistence layer to enable the customer to step forward and backward to get an overview of the history of the production line. This is also very important for a lot of the, uh, production lines. And uh, it's uh, sometimes. Uh, yeah, and one, I'm wondering why they do not have this right now. At the end, you are getting an additional overview of insights of the data if you are making uh, analytics on these cycle times. And I will come back two slides later to a special point of this. As I have talked about it, we, are, we have built this uh, an application with, let me say, four different areas. I told you something about the navigation, to navigate through a production line coming from the earth to the nation, to a hall, to a production line inside, and to the station you want to monitor. On the right top one, you see the sequencer. This means getting information about the cycle times from this product. And uh, I will come back later to, to show you an overview of what this means in a graphic. Cycle times evaluation, not only getting cycle times, you need to, to check how many milliseconds you needed for some parts to produce. And you can compare this. If you are producing 500,000 uh, units per day or 5,000 units, it doesn't matter. You have to compare the cycle times, and you need to come back to a point where the cycle time was too much, too high, too low, and something like this. And at la last but not least, we made uh, analytics. And we started with analytics features from MindSphere to bring onto the stage some results of the features which is MindSphere providing. And we added this feature set by our own a little bit more and to show the customer uh, in which direction we are thinking. Customer was helping here to define the requirements as a normal procedure, uh, process we made with other customers as well. The whole solution was MQTT based. This means. The sensors were sending data inside MQTT messages. And the interesting point here is you can not only send maybe temperature or pressure values, you can put in other stuff in such a message as well. You can scale this feature, and you can put in additional things like binary streams or whatever. And you can define your own subset of MQTT message types uh, to deal with for the future. These messages we flagged for using with MindSphere. So this means, as I said before, if a message was coming through the MSP from IBM, we have customized here together with IBM guys the MSP to enable the MSP to tunnel the messages directly to the MindSphere platform. We created a listener on the MindSphere platform to get these messages and to work with the content of the messages. And as I said, different message types were coming up. 
And we decided what we have to do with the content from the different message types. Here I show you a screen with the thing which I talked about here on the right side. It's a graph. And uh, these are the steps of, so, of an S7 graph. And you can imagine this needs a few seconds to step through the things here on the right side. And if it works as a valid process, it was all run green. And if something was going uh, bad, it was red. I will read now, because the time is a little bit short here. Uh, setting up the existing requirement to run with Minds here was a walkthrough step here. Enable communication overall, create a listener, as I said. Creating a stable persistence layer to move forward and backward. Making an application for smart start and first progress in analytics, like a cockpit in analytics features. And uh, get sequence information here deeper and deeper. This is the result and the results we have reached. Analytic features to track historical data. Tracking and monitoring of sequence cascades. Cycle times analytics, upcoming production error evaluation, and management overview at the top. So let's talk about the next future steps which are possible. If you want to go ahead or if the customer wants to go ahead, we can enable a scalable analytic reporting tool set. And we can support the complete production line with dialog within SPS graph itself. So this means we want to send this graph directly into a message to our application. And then we can get closer to the S7 component, which is also interesting for Siemens in overall to make this happen. Last words here. We as artists are an integration partner for you, Digital Journey. We support in finding, a, let me say, a meta view for you, digitalization. We enable your ideated digitalization future. Together with you, we are thinking about your future steps and your future processes you want to have. And we are prepared to support you. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.